Everybody. My name is Caden. My name's Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we are Yahoo in the Torah, and this is the uh, YouTube channel. And this is a Shabbat, and Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Thank you guys so much for hanging out there with us and for hanging out with Yahuwah. It is a day that we are supposed to be celebrating his name, supporting him, and he supports us with a day of rest. And it is an amazing time, and it is an amazing day that we can be here. And sorry for some of the technical difficulties we are having here. We are still getting things ramped up on this. All right, fam, how you guys doing? Good. Good, good. Good. Tired. We're tired. Everybody's tired. We're down one right now. He's passed out super cold. We still have sick cows. And so we are, we thank you guys very, very much for the prayers and support that we have from you guys. We love you guys very much. And um, it's, it's amazing the family that we have out there. And I've said this before and I will say it again, but we live our days and our weeks by you guys out there. And we are simply reading the Torah with you guys. We are no teachers we're no pastors we're no preachers we're no we're just a family sitting out in the middle of a jungle out in the middle of south america and we are reading scriptures with you guys and the family that we have are you guys and we are blessed by it and we cannot wait until the kingdom comes until we can actually party like it's uh you know the millennium it's the the sabbath millennium which we are into and um you know it, it's just going to be a great time so let's begin with a, a quick word of prayer Press heavenly father we come before you as your people. Father, we come before you. A lot of us are troubled. 
A lot of us are not, but we come praising your name. We come glorifying your name. And Father, there is no other name anywhere that needs to be lifted up like yours. Father, we thank you for your son. We thank you for your Torah. We thank you for the word and the path and the way forward that you have given to us, that you have protected throughout the years and the ways that are beautiful and the ways that are just a blessing to our lives, Father. There is no other way but your ways, and every other way is an abomination. And Father, we lift up your name. We, we lift up your Torah in everything that we do. And Father, we lift up your son, Yahusha HaMashiach, that came and died and, and was resurrected and is the reason that we are able to be rejoiceful in all that we do. Father, you are a gracious leader. We cannot wait for your son to be our king. We cannot wait for you to... Put your vengeance upon this evil that is upon this world and for freeing us from our captivities. Father, we are waiting you, we are calling for you, and we love you, and we thank you for everything. And Father, those who are out there listening to this, Father, I ask that they are blessed, that their days are blessed, that they are seeking your kingdom, that they are seeking your Torah, and that you will dwell with everyone, and that your light will shine upon them, and it will shine upon these teachings of today. Father, we thank you so much for everything. We ask this in the name of Yahusha. Amen. All right, gentlemen. Uh, the gentleman that I have, I have Nicole right across from me. She's running the chat room. I have my main man uh, to the left, and I have my other main man to the right, and Jaden is sleeping. And so we will get to this, and this is today. We are in the sixth month. It is the seventh day of the 13th of our Creator's calendar. And so we want to do what we do every week, first and foremost, and we want to go over these. And... These are the commands, and for anybody that's new that is joining us, and every week we, we do get somebody new, and a lot of people listen to this for the very, very first time, and there's always a, some questions about what are these commands that we're talking about right here, and what are we about to go over? Well, these are the laws, statutes, and commands that our Creator gave us back in the days when Moshe was leading the people, and there was a Torah prior to that. In fact, Adam had a Torah, Abram had a Torah, Yitzhak, Yaakov, they all had a Torah. They all kept commandments. They all did sacrifices. They all walked with our Creator, and this is the opportunity that we have today, and we have lived in a world, and we've grown up in, a, in captivity to where people have abandoned these commandments. They say that these commandments are no good. They don't belong to us. They're for the old people. They're for God's chosen people. And that's the only thing that I can agree with is that they are for Yah's chosen people. And it is very important that we understand these. And part of these commandments is that we're supposed to write them up on our heart, up on our mind. And what we're going to go over today is that one of the commandments is guard the commandments of Yah with everything. And in fact, it doesn't say that once or twice. It says it a few times. And when something is said more than once, it is something we, we should absolutely take note of because it is very, very, very important that we do this. So let's go over this to begin with and let's go around this table and let's let's go slowly. Let's go thoughtfully on this. And how's the chat room day? Anyone in there? Um, we have RS. We have Zachary Z. RS, Zach's wife. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate chatting with you guys. Much love to you guys out there. And we we agree with you guys totally on everything that you guys were talking about. Um, the evil of the skies and the evil that is all around us, and exactly what RS was talking about. That's the same stuff we believe in as well. And we have separated ourselves from the world, and we look crazy to the rest of the world. Our family all thinks we're insane. We're the only people we, we blasted out of Babylon, out of North America. America, and they're like, oh, why would you want to leave the luxuries of, of North America? And we were, well, we're, we don't want to partake in her sins. And so those who are separated from Yah, from not from Yah, but from the world are Yah's people. And so that is what we want to be. And you can't be a peculiar people if you smell like the world, taste like the world, and are doing just what the world does. And so this is why it's important that we, we keep Shabbat and we keep that. Who else we got? We have the Grand, Carla, and Lester. All right. The Grand, our surrogate grandma. We, we love her out there. Thank you so much. And Carla, and I don't know if his DJ is out there listening or too, but thank you very, very much. And Lester, I hope you're doing well, brother. I hope you're feeling much better. Thank you guys so much for spending some time with us on this. Much love to all you guys out there. All right. The first commandment right here is to be fruitful. I'm going to actually, let's go over three of them. I'm going to go three. Be fruitful multiply and replenish the earth. Commandments one, two, and three. Okay, what's next? We have subdue it, have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living creatures. Yep. The, and the, go ahead, Nicole. The herb bearing fruit of every tree for food. Yep. Man and woman should build their own families. 
We need to master sin. Every cling moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Okay, and I'm going to stop on the don't don't eat the blood because when when I was talking about commandments that reiterate themselves over and over and over, this is one of them, right? If we take a look at these other commandments, there's only one verse for a lot of these. But where we have multiple verses, this is things we need to understand. And if you're ordering your steak rare, you're actually eating the blood. Or if you eat blood in any kind of food, life is in the blood. And it clearly says over and over and over, we are not to eat the blood. Okay, walk before me and be perfect. And the next one is, is the one that I was kind of reiterating here. And this one's filling up. It's guard Yahoo's covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. So commandment 11 is reiterated, I don't know how many times, we're talking at least 35 times 36. right here. 36 times so far. And so this is uh, one of these commandments that if we are not guarding Yahuwah's covenant, laws and statutes, Kate, how, how does one guard the covenant? How do they guard it? You do it, you don't let it slip from your hands. If you're not doing it, you're not guarding it. If you fall off the path, you're not guarding the Torah anymore. Well, when people tell you that the laws of our creator are on the cross, is that guarding the laws? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And so, guys, please take note that there is a lot of commands right here that said to guard the command. All right, commandment 12. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach the teach your children the commands and guard the ways of Yahuwah. Okay, and so right there, you look right here. We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right there, um, or is that seven? There's seven right there. And that is very important. And it, it reiterates again. And for those of you guys who have kids, this is what we should be doing, right? This is, should not be a, a secret thing that parents just understand, but we need to raise our kids and we need to put them in the way of the Torah. And when we put them in the way of the Torah, that means the right way forward. And they will have a harder time going astray if you raise them up into that. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Matzah. There is one Torah for the stranger and the Ebrim. Yep, and that is a very important thing. And, and we've gone over this, and I, I don't want to bore people, but the point of writing them on our heart, mind, and soul is that we might be a little bored with them, right? We should know them so well that we can recite them as we see them. And it says there's one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ebrim. So when they say the Torah is for the, the people of old or the people of out, that law right there says that is not true because we are all strangers when we are out of the covenant. The only way that we are not strangers is we are when we are in covenant with our creator. Okay? Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no white, mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven images. Do not bring Yahuwah's name to naught. Keep the Sabbath. Honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do, Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from a rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. Yahoo's laws for criminals. And there are laws for criminals in the land and things that we should do. Things like you can kill the person that breaks into your house in the middle of the night, but during the day, um, you're not supposed to. Okay? Continue on. You shall stone the witches, wizards, and mediums. And guys, please take note of this commandment with a star by it. When we have a star by it, we are not saying, well, we are saying, but you probably shouldn't do it in the world we're in right now. Because if you went and you killed this witches, wizards, and mediums, you would end up in jail. And you would end up with a, probably a lot more time than people who do regular crimes. Um, just because the world loves the witches and warlocks and all these, these crazy things. Do not lie with beasts. No sacrifice to other gods. Do not oppress the stranger, fatherless, or widow. Yes, do very not, important. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, raiment, return it before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow a multitude of evil. Do not judge in righteousness against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Do not mention any pagan names. Cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger of the before you. Do not bow down to any other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make or use his anointing oil on a normal person. 
Do not make her use this perfume on a normal person. Do not eat the fat. Do what you say you are going to do. Yeah, be a real man. R- return. What is your neighbor's? Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. And so that it says only two things here, but these one of them is, if you guys notice, is an entire chapter. And so for those who are new to the Torah, there is a guideline for things we eat, right? We're not supposed to eat um, unclean food. That starts with pig, right? The biggest candy of the Christians is the swine. And the, the hardest thing that Christians, I, that I have ever seen, that they have to get rid of is swine. They, they may change to a different day of, of serving Yah, or they may do other stuff, but they cannot give up their swine. And so it's very important that we are not to eat that because it is an abomination to our Creator. Okay, women's time of separation. Lots of rules there. You stay away from your woman during the time of separation. Obey, Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Okay. Keep the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corn through your field, or you shall not glean your vineyard. And a lot of these might sound weird to you guys because you may not think that we are in the land, but the commandments that we put here, that, that we have um, studied up on, that we have put in this list, are commandments that we can absolutely keep today. And so it says, do not reap the corners of your field. And so that, if you are a farmer or you guys are out there, how would that look today to us? How, do, how, do, how are we going to do it, Cade? Well, we are, since everything is fenced off and everyone has uh, security problems and thieves and around, it's not a righteous nation. Um, we are going to take part of our land and we are going to take the corner and we're going to deliver it to the poor when it's ready. Yeah, and so that is something that we can absolutely do during these times. And there's no reason that we shouldn't just because we're not in the land. Okay, 73, do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage. They are due. Do, do not, not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not diverse your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool. And a lot of people can't figure this out. A lot. We had a comment, and I'm still blown away with the guy was like 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 your creator really cares about what's 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 on you or something of the sort i don't remember exactly what he said but it was a, it was an idiocracy when he when he said it but there's a reason when you take linen and you take wool there is a frequency vibration that, that when you combine the two of them if you put it on you it would hurt a human now why is this important well number one you don't want to get hurt how would we know this was even a how would we even know this well, because it's in the Torah. We wouldn't know that we shouldn't put linen and wool together, and it, it's an issue. Okay, do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of trees for three years. Do, do not, not practice pra- sorcery. Do, do, go ahead. Do not round the corners of your beard or your head. Don't be a beta. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measurements. Do not walk in the manners of the nation. What does that mean? What is it walking in the, the, the manners of the nation? Does that mean going to a movie on Saturday, Saturday afternoon matinees? That is the way of the nation. The way of the nation is going to be doing what the rest of the nation is doing. The nation lives the rat race. The nation lives the worldly life of going out and shopping on Saturday, watching movies, getting home, kicking back and watching football. And they spend no time with Yah. They spend no time in the Word. They are just the world, the definition of the world. And that's the ways of the nations. Yeah, they are um, Torah-free is what they are. They have no Torah in them. And so, yeah, that's the way of the nations. They don't care about the Torah. Feast of first fruits, Shavuot, and Omer count. Keep them. Feast of trumpets, Yom Torah. Feast Fe- of Sukkot, Shemiyaretz. Atzeretz. Atzeretz. If you bless me in the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. And again, this would be a, a one in the in the land because you everybody swears and they, they say dirty words and evil things and... and you know, they're putting Yah's name in there, and, and it's not actually Yah's name. They say God, which is a, a, a pagan name, but they don't know any different, and so they're literally doing what they, they, they shouldn't be doing. Okay, if you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahoo and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah of being a Nazarene. Blow the trumpet on the new moon and feasts. Okay, and that one, guys, there is no command. We have to fix this. Commandment 105 is not actual commandment um, for blow the trumpet on the new moon. There is no such commandment, but it they do have it in Psalms, 
And so, but the problem here is we have somehow gotten on with traditions of men. And I don't think it's a bad thing to blow your trumpet on a new moon, but there is no command that literally says blow the, tr blow the trumpet on the new moon. But we are supposed to do it on Yom Terar. And um, there's other feasts that we're supposed to blow it on as well. But they, we, we do need to fix that. 106, wear seats on the corners of your garments. Laws of whoever touches a corpse. Follow Yahuwah's law of inheritance. Torah of keeping your own to Yahuwah. Okay, and that's very important, right? Because when you, when you bind yourself and you create an oath to Yah, you are bounding your soul in this, right? You may, it may just be like, oh, I swear to God or something of the sort. But your soul is being bound to it. It may just be words in this physical realm that we are in, but in the realm to come, you have made an oath. And if you're putting it in the name of our creator, you better stick to it. You better be very careful when you are keeping or when you're making an oath under Yah. Okay. When in the land, the laws of a murder and the victim's families. And again, that one is, is once for in the land. It, but it would be very good if we kept this stuff today. But there's no such thing. But those are, are ones we need to keep. Do not add or take away from the word. Okay. And that's a very, very important one, right? That is one that we base a lot of our teachings upon, especially when we go over the writings of Brother Shaul. When we get into 1 Timothy and, and various books that have things about widows being 60 years old or um, that you ha they had to be qualified widows or you had to find people that are deacons and you have to have these qualifications, things like that. That is all stuff outside of the Torah. And we have to make sure that we are not adding to or taking away from the word. Very, very important. 112, guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. Okay, and that, that's, an, that's a, if you guys, these are coming into the new ones and these are these are for me what i they're exciting these are exciting commands because um they're new for us because we're just into deuteronomy but when you look at learn to fear yahuwah there's three six seven of those right out of the gate and we're just basically we're not even halfway through deuteronomy yet so what does that mean eli to fear yahuwah to revere him and obey him so what does that mean to, to fear Yahuwah? How would you want, how would you know, how would Yah know you're fearing him? By guarding, by keeping the Torah. Yeah, guarding his Torah, right? If you, if you, you wouldn't fear when you toss the laws of our creator on the cross, you're not fearing our creator. Okay. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Okay. We've heard that before. And I think uh, Deuteronomy, okay, that is six, five in there. Yeah. Cause the Shema's in that. Um, and that's very important as well, right? We are supposed to love Yah with all of our heart. And going on to that, it says we're supposed to bind the laws upon your hand. And the the Jews, the Talmudic Jews, will actually take a little box and some leather and strap it all up and tie it to their heads and things of that nature. I do not believe that is like that. We'd have no command for anything such as that. And um, I believe that little box looks, looks pretty evil when you do it. But how, Kate, how do you bind the laws upon your hand? Well, it's what you're always reading, right? You're always having on your mind. Whatever you're doing is what's going to be on your hand. It's going to be on your time. That's the you're more doing. you read, the more you're binding things into your system. And so when you have this, and um, it, the next one is that, right? Actually, um, where's the one? Yeah. So where's the one that you're supposed to put them in the frontlets of your eyes? Is that in the same one or is that coming That's out? that one. That's okay. the bind the laws on your hand. So the same one goes there, bind the laws up on your hand and also put them in the, between the, you're supposed to have them as the frontlets of your eyes, which means you're always supposed to be keeping an eye on Yah's ways, on his things. Are you walking in obedience or are you walking with the way of Hasatan? Okay. So write them on your doorpost. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave to Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Okay, and those are new ones. Those are ones that we, you know, when you're not actually technically writing up the, the commandments in there. I've, I've read through this a zillion times. And, you know, it's like some people are like, well, don't swear by his name or swear by his name. It literally says swear by his name. But it goes back to you better understand what you're doing. You're, you're swearing by the creator of the universe's name. And everything that is good comes from his name. And if you are swearing upon it, you're, you're, you could be getting yourself into some, some you know, tricky waters. Okay. Destroy graven images. Does that mean just in the land or does this mean in your house? What happens when you have like a, a little, little idol of Buddha or something you got from a, a Chinese uh, store or something you thought was really cool and they all had Buddha? Destroy it. Yeah, destroy it. What is That's a graven image. What else? What other things could be graven images? Money. Money. TV. What about your TV? TV, statues. I mean, people will sit there and they literally will sit on a couch and start watching TV for hours on end. 
I've seen pictures of kids and I've seen pictures of, of even adults when they're watching a movie and their mouths are wide open and they got the one-eyed sleep snatcher and it's called television programming for a reason. Never let your kids watch TV ever. Don't let them watch Disney. Don't let them watch TV. Don't let them watch advertisements. Don't let them turn that on. When you turn the TV on, you are programming your children to the way of the world and you have no control of what is being into their mind and it only takes one time on the TV for them to have this for the rest of their lives. Okay, do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do their Elohim. Very, very important, right? Because you could go get a, a stick and you could carve it up and make a picture of Yah and say, this is my Elohim. And he says, don't do that. Because our, why, do, why wouldn't we do this, Kate? Well, because it's not Yahuwah. It's Making not Yahuwah. a thing out of stone is not Yahuwah. Yahuwah's spirit is not going to come dwell in something you made with your hands. And he's all around us, right? Everything. Every time you take a, a breath of air, you're breathing in the spirit of Yah. Every time that, that every, Yah's all around us in everything. We do not need to take a chunk of wood or whatever it is and, and do that. All right. Rejoice in all that Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken to the words of false prophets. Kill. The false prophets. And again, please, everyone note, there is a asterisk right there because we are living in a world of complete uh, tragedy. The people all around us, I mean, uh, you and the false prophets are all around us. And they are they literally will use blood and pentagrams and things of that nature to bring the, to read fortunes. And, you know, all these people, all these people that are doing this stuff, they're all false prophets. Now, how do we know right out of the gate they're a false prophet? If they go against the Torah. Or they go against Yah, right? If they say to serve other Elohim, that is a false prophet and we should kill them. And so that's very important. Do not listen and kill those that try to turn you away from Yahuwah, even if they are family members. Now, this is going to be hard words for most people to understand, right? We talked about this when we were doing Deuteronomy 13, but it's, it's, it's literally... You have Jeho if you had a family member that tried to convert you to a Christian and they want you to say a prayer and you're saved and that's their Elohim lit in the land, you would kill those people because they were trying to turn you away from Yah. And what you would do is you would definitely say, hey, that's not true. Let's look at the law, statutes and commands. Let's go through the Torah. Let's read through this right here like we're reading through that and maybe you can convert them back. But in the land, if anybody was trying to get you and send you away from Yah, it's hard to hear, but you're supposed to kill them. Okay, if a city has turned away from Yahuwah, burn the city and kill all the inhabitants. Again, very hard words, right? This is why the Christians love these laws of God on the cross, right? It's like, well, we don't want to hear that. Burn the entire city and kill everybody. Well, yeah, if the city has turned away from Yah, that is the commandment is that you're supposed to go in there and you're supposed to destroy the city, burn everything they have in the streets and leave it as a pile and never let it be um, occupied again. Okay. Do, do, not cut, do not cut yourselves. Yep. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. Where's what we're missing there? For the dead is what that is. And that was that was a weird commandment. We don't know anything about that. I guess back in the day they used to shave between their eyes or something. Um, but that's a no-no. We don't do that, especially for the dead. I guess you went, it says only for the dead. So I guess if you want to shave between your eyes and it wasn't for the dead, I guess that's fine. So it does, there's no other commandment except not for the dead. 134, you shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> of clean food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. And we thought this was a really strange, <laughs> odd command because um, it, be, it, it needs to be a clean animal, right? Because if it, a pig died, it, you wouldn't give that to anybody because that's unclean food. Or if a rattlesnake died or any of that stuff, it has to be clean food. But if it dies of itself, like if you walk out there and your cow is dead, you cannot carve it up and eat it. That That's very important. And why would that be, Cade? Because it's probably when something dies, it is, becomes like sick, it becomes disease, it becomes a whole bunch of bacteria inside the body that the body's not fighting out anymore. Yeah, and so we found that interesting because you can give it to the stranger, right? If you have, and you know, I think Tyler was talking about somebody being like poor or something and giving it to the poor. It doesn't say poor, it says give it to the stranger. And I guess that's... Um, that's interesting, but it's one of the most interesting commands, I think, that I've seen that brings, you know, something to, to take note of. Okay, 136. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. And that is the only real tithing command that so far that we have found. And it doesn't say go give your money to a 501c3 Sunday, you know, Sol Victus Day preacher. 
um, that is preaching, you know, easy, easy, easy words to hear. Um, it's about when you have an increase in your land, you're supposed to tithe what you have, but it doesn't tell you where exactly how or what you need to do. So we've been trying to figure that out. And the way that we can figure it out is that we give it to the poor or we give it to the people that need and something of the sort. And so when you have an increase, we need to give back to Yah's people, which are the poor, the fatherless, the strangers, all those things, the strangers um, that are, and um, that's how we do that. And so uh, hopefully that makes sense. How's the comments going over there, Nicole? Good. We need to, <clears throat> I don't know what's you got going on. You throat. I do. We that's need so to clean. say hi to Joey, DJ, and Charlie. Oh, those, DJ's in here? Those are Carla's boys oh, that are all DJ's listening to. Oh, okay. DJ, Charlie, and Joey. Oh, D I, I didn't know she had three kids. Oh, okay. right. Wow. We, we heard of DJ before, but hi, guys. Hi, everybody. Hope you guys are well out there. I hope you guys are listening in on this stuff, and I hope you guys are taking notes of this stuff. And your mama's a real smart mama. She's uh, into Torah, and that makes your mama somebody who's even more respectable than average because she's leading you on the right track. So all you youngsters out there that are listening to this stuff, this is very important. This will make you guys solid men in a world of beta men, and so the, the Torah is what makes men. All right. And we have Jay and Kim. She asked for us for her to pray to have a good night's sleep. Okay, Kim needs a good night's sleep. So everybody out there, if you will, please pray for Kim to have a good night's sleep. Kane's over here waking up, putting his hand up. He wants a good night's sleep too, but we are in the middle of being tested, and so um, there is no sleep for the tested, but there will be sleep for the righteous at some point. And um, everything that happens is because Elohim is gracious. And um, I made a comment, Kate, I, you know, I, I, before we go into this real quick, made a comment when we were talking about it the other day because we've had 22 cows that have died and I, Kate is, I was like sometimes I, I was telling the boys I said I'm getting the hearts and, and souls and everything we have to be courageous because when something dies here we have to feed it to the dogs we don't we don't have any other food we have no other way to do it and so it is a gruesome thing where we go from the loves of our lives to something that we have to put a knife to and it is extremely hard and and I told Kate I said sometimes things have to die for the glory of Elohim and he says, well, we've already lost 22. Don't, don't, isn't Yah think that we're loyal already? And I said, sometimes it's not only for the glorification of, of him, but it's also for others to see the glorification as well. And that no matter what happens in life, we have to take these strides. And it, it may not make sense to us. It may break our hearts. It may rip it from our chest, but we have to glorify Yah in everything we do, especially through the pain and through the, the agony. And he is there with us and he will never leave us. And there, there's always a, a hope with Yah. All right. So let's get into this Deuteronomy 15. Here we go. At the end of every seven years, you shall make a release. At, and this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lends aught unto his neighbor shall release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother because it is called Yahuwah's release. Okay. Um, that sounds like a command. Yes. Command, everyone with me? Yep. yep. Okay, so seven years. This is What is this called? Seven years Jubilee? Yeah, the, uh, release Jubilee of release. the release of Yahuwah. Yeah, the release of Yahuwah. So remember that. And so this is something that even though we are not in the land, we could still do this, right? Because it says it's talking about our neighbor. It's talking about our brother. It's talking about people that do relate to us, and we should be keeping the stuff as much as we possibly can. So if somebody owes you a bunch of money and it comes upon the, the seventh year, you need to forget that debt, and you need to say, hey, Yah did this for you. Of a foreigner, you may exact it again, but that which is yours with your brother, your hand shall release. Okay, so that's interesting as well, right? Uh, this is for the people of Yah, right? The people of Yah are supposed to be taken care of in the fashion that Yah wants us to. But if you are not one of Yah's and you're, you're not one of Yah's because you're not keeping his Torah, then we can extract, you know, there, there's no debt clearing when, when it's against others. Four, save when there shall be no poor among you, for Yahuwah shall greatly bless you in the land which Yahuwah Eloheka gives you for an inheritance to possess it. Only if you carefully hearken unto the voice of Yahuwah Eloheka to guard, to do all these commandments which I command you this day. Okay, there's number 37, right? That is the 37th time we have heard this command right here. And it says to guard, to do all these commandments. Which commandments, okay, Eli? All of them. Yeah, all of them. Is there any? Is there anything? It says it says guard, and every time it says guard all of these commandments. Okay, for Yahuwah Eloheka blesses you as He promised you, and you shall lend unto many nations, but you shall not borrow, and you shall reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over you. What is this talking? Is this talking about modern day Israel, folks? No. 
Okay, because modern day Israel is not a holy land, and you know that those are those are again hard words for everybody because everybody, uh, you know, there's a there's a I don't know, things I can't even say on YouTube anymore. But uh, everybody is feels really sad because of the Jews' history. But this is not the Jews, right? This is the people that are in covenant with Yah, right? And if you would have an abortion clinic in the land of Israel, you are not one of Yah's people. Okay. If there be among you a poor man of one of your brethren within any of your gates in your land, which Yahuwah Eloheka gives you, you shall not harden your heart nor shut your hand from your poor brother. Okay. Hold on. This is a command, right? Anyone with me? Anyone yeah. awake? Yep. <laughs> <Kind of. laughs> wait, we got one sleeping we got a couple zombified looking guys we'll make it through fam we're gonna make this okay so this is a command right if there's a poor man of your brother okay so if there's somebody poor around you number one you're not supposed to harden your heart nor shut your hand from your poor brother so this goes to the thing that i was talking about a long time ago that if anybody ever wants to donate to boss clan um that's how you can do it. You can go find somebody that is homeless. You can go find somebody that is in need. You don't need to give them money. You don't need to give them anything, but you can give them a huge hug. And they, they might be dirty. They might be grimy. They might be greasy and they might smell real bad. But hey, we all have those days. And you know what? They wouldn't be where they are at if they had a choice. And so just a few moments of love and you can, you can give this, right? Even if you don't have cash, even if you can't pick up a burger or something to give these people, go by there and talk to them and, and explain to them. They've, they've heard the Christian doctrine all their lives, but they have probably never heard that there's a different way and a better way. And, um, you know, that's, that's how you can help them. All right, so we have that as a command, Nicole? Yeah, we'll have to do it. All right, we're getting all these? Yeah. Okay. But you shall open your hand wide unto him and shall surely lend him sufficient for his need in that which he wants, okay? So there's the command right there. So if somebody comes to you, if somebody broke comes to you and you turn them away, you have broken a commandment of Yah. And a lot of people will do that because a lot of people will look at the homeless people or look at those and they're like, oh, they're just gonna use that for drugs. Or they will have an experience where they ended up, I, we know that Carla and DJ had an issue with this as well. And we pray for you guys on this thing that, that Yah will encourage you and it's not going to be every person that you see isn't going to isn't going to put hands on you, right? That's going to be a, a rare circumstance. And for the stigmata or the taboo that the homeless person is going to use whatever money for drugs, I'll have to explain to you guys from as an as an old homeless person, as a drug addict, you got to eat first, right? You got to eat first, and they're not sitting on the side of the road getting two dollars and thinking they're going to go buy drugs more than likely they're going to buy something to eat because hunger does beat out drug addiction most every time and so that is something that we need to keep understanding that if somebody comes in need we have to take care of them because yah will provide for us and he'll provide for them as well beware that there be not a thought in your wicked heart saying the seventh year the year of release is at hand and your eye be evil against your poor brother and you give him not and he cry unto El Yahuwah against you, and it be sin unto you. Okay, what did that say, Eli? So basically, don't harden your heart against someone because you know that the seventh year is coming, or the year, which is the year of release, which means that the, they don't have to pay back the loan. Or right. Anything. If you came to me in year six and you said, man, I, I need $500 or I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm, and I, if I harden my heart and I go, man, there's only 240 days left that I could ever get my money back from this guy, and you do not lend him based upon that what do you think the hand of yah is going to do who has provided everything to you probably smite you down yeah he could put you in that exact same position where somebody you have to go ask it will turn you down as well okay verse 10 you shall surely give him and your heart shall not be grieved when you give unto him because that for that for this thing yahuwah eloheka shall bless you in all your works and in all that you put your hand unto so as much as you think you're giving out your last dimes or your last quarters or whatever it is to, to the, the broken and homeless or those who in need, right? It says that Yahuwah has blessed you. The reason you have a single quarter or a single dollar in your pocket is because Yah has blessed you, right? He gives and he takes away. Blessed be the name of Yah. And so if we are some sort of hard, evil people that thinks the year of release. Now that goes into this quick question, Nicole. When is the year of release? We don't know yet. We don't know. So Nicole's counting back 
Like she's literally counting back thousands of days. She's attempting to to try to find out the exact day of creation. And we, we think we're on to something, but um, it's a lot of work. And once we are able to count back and figure out when it is, then we could actually figure out if we are in what years we are in, because I, I don't know. And, you know, you can go to Torah calendar, but Torah calendar is still somewhat Jewish because they have Jewish stuff all over it. And we are not Jewish. We don't celebrate Jewish holidays. We don't. The Jews are their calendars are all completely awkward. They're way off. And um, their rabbis have really put put a beating to their their Torah. Fearmonger and Mason are both here. All right, Fearmonger, I'm Mason. I'm sure Deb is too. Good Deb, morning. what's up? How you guys doing? Thanks, fam. We love you guys. Hope you are good. Hope you are out there. And Fearmonger has been a Fearmonger has been one of those guys that when we have had cows tap dance on our uh, watermelon and life has just tried to destroy us. This guy has tried to donate cash to us more than once, more than twice. And this guy, this guy is doing exactly what we're talking about right here where he's trying to help those guys out. So much love to you guys. Really, really love you guys. All right. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. Therefore, I command you saying, you shall, uh, you shall open your hand wide unto your brother, to your poor and to your needy in your land. Okay. So this is something real interesting because I always wondered if they ever had a war on poverty, if they could ever end the war, the, the everybody being broke. But Yah says right here for the, for the poor shall never cease out of your land. And that, you know, that's something we should, we should understand is, is if you are able to have a house, if you have something that keeps you dry, you are better off than a lot of other people who literally live alongside the road. I don't know if you guys have seen some of the cities in North America nowadays. Um, it, there's, there, it's just, camps there's endless camps alongside the roads and there's no every the homelessness in north america which was supposed to be a first world country is now i i would have to say it looks far worse than the country we are in which is what people consider a third world country but compared to what the u.s looks like right now it it looks more first world so i, I don't know what exactly a third world country is but we got to help the poor we got to love these people all right and if your brother an every man or an every woman be sold unto you and serve you six years then in the seventh year, you shall let him go free from you. Now, we didn't have this command in there because we don't, there's probably a 0% chance you would ever end up with a slave these days. Um, maybe somebody wants to work for you or something of the sort. Um, Nicole, are you busily typing in the chat room? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I won't get any input from you on there. What's going on in there? Hold on. All right. Let's, let's get over we to the chat, people. We were just discussing doing the... The finding the jubilee or the actual find the day jubilee. Of we got some other yeah. people on there. We got some other explorers. Yeah. Uh, no, not really. Nobody no. out there. Yeah. So I guess it's all come down to the moons and how we can figure out the moons, trying to figure out the days and, and things of that nature. You got it all figured out, don't you, Nicole? I hope so, but hope I don't so. know. It's a lot. It's a lot of work. A lot to dig through. It is a lot to dig through. All right, and so let's go to thirteen. And when you send him out free from you, you shall not let him go away empty. Okay, now, do we need to add any of this into a command? We, we're not going to have a, a slave, right? How did you become a slave back in the day, Eli? Well, uh, when you were completely poor and you had to sell yourself. Sell yourself, or what other ways do we hear that you became a slave? Uh, when you, I believe when there was one when you were in debt and you had to sell yourself to pay back the debt as yeah, well. Yeah, debt. There's also another one. You remember that, Kate? When you are caught stealing. Caught stealing, yeah, and you can't pay it back. You become a slave. So... Um, that wouldn't really apply, but if it did apply and we did have them, then in the seventh year, we need to leave them. when they go, they need to have a lot of stuff, right? They, you need to give them stuff to start their new life. And y'all explains this really good right here. And when you send him out free from you, you shall not let him go away empty. You shall furnish him liberally out of your flock and out of your floor and out of your wine press of wherewith Yahuwah Eloheka has blessed you. You shall give unto him. Now, this, is, this would be a really great way to end slave labor. If you're stuck serving a guy for whatever year, six years, six, seven years, it's not too bad. Um, but if you're stuck out there and all of a sudden you're done, he gives you, you know, if you were able to leave, if he set you free without anything, you would go and you'd ha probably have to become a slave again, right? This way, he's giving you some, some sheep. He's giving you some food. He's giving you some wine. And you basically, if, you, if you're broke like that, you would take your sheep and you would go sell a sheep, right? You would start your life over. So Yah has created and, and given a great plan for those who are completely broke to come back into existence and that. What you so got it kind of reminds me of like how the payroll system is here. Mm -hmm. Like when people quit or when you fire them, you have to pay them double for the time that they worked for you, like they get a certain amount. So you have to give them extra, even though you've been paying them the whole time they've worked for you, 
you still have to give them more yeah, and we, when their employment we, ends. We are um, entrepreneurs of North America. We are, we've had 40 some businesses in the States. We, we've done a lot of stuff in the States. Yah has helped us do a lot of stuff in the States. Down here, it's a lot different. And so when we actually came down here and we had a, got employees and stuff, it wasn't like the States. It, you, you, it's like you keep your employee here for a very long time. Even if they're terrible employees, it's hard to get rid of employees down in South America as where North America, you just kick them to the curb and they're gone. Um, down here, you're basically stuck with them. So, uh, and when you do fire them, you have to give them a bunch of money. Um, it's like, it's quite a bit of cash. So you don't just fire them and they're not just sit to the road. So, um, they've incorporated a little bit of y'all stuff, a little bit, not much. 15. And you shall remember that you were a bondsman in the land of Mitzrayim and Yahuwah Eloheka redeemed you. Therefore, I command you this thing today. Very important. And I, I wish we had this command today because I think it, it would just be a, a huge thing. And it shall be. If he say unto you, I will not go away from you because he loves you and your house because he is well with you, then you shall take an awl and thrust it through his ear unto the door and he shall be your servant forever. And also unto your maidservant, you shall do likewise. Okay, so that would be very interesting, right? This would be something that, I mean, in if you had a good master or a good boss or somebody you want to work for, it's the same thing, right? You don't mind going to work for a good boss who takes care of you. And if you you have a house and a wife and this boss is, you know, successfully taking care of you for five or six years and you, hey, I'm, I'm clinging his cornfields for him. Uh, this guy wants to keep me on, stick my ear to the door and thrust an all through it. So here we go. All right, 18. It shall not seem hard unto you when you send him away free from you. For he has been worth a double hired servant to you in serving you six years and Yahuwah Eloheka shall bless you in all that you do. Again, huge promises, right? If you take care of the poor, if you take care of those in need, if you take care of Yah's people, Yah is gonna take care of us. And people can say, well, I don't think he's taking care of us. Well, are you still able to breathe? Are you still able to hear? Are you still able to see? Are you still able to get up and worship him every day? Then he's definitely taking care of you. So 19. All the firstling males that come out of your herd and of your flock, you say, shall sanctify unto Yahuwah Eloheka. You shall do no work with the firstling of your bullock, nor shear the firstling of your sheep. Okay, that sounds like a command. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, this doesn't sound like anything out of the land either. This sounds like something that we should have here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all the firstling males that come from your herd, okay, so this is a command. And of your flock, you shall sanctify unto Yahuwah Eloheka. Well, the thing is, how would we, re we wouldn't be able to redeem them. I mean, if we sanctify them. No, we, but wouldn't this go under sanctify the firstborn? It would. Okay. It would. And um, I just we just don't have a way to redeem it like they did back in the days where you take it to the priest, he evaluates it, and you either pay or, or whatnot. Um, this is actually a different thing. If you read on it, it'll tell you actually what to do with it. Uh, okay. Thanks, guy. You shall eat it before Yahuwah Eloheka year by year in the place which Yahuwah shall choose you and your household. Okay. So this is something different here. So... So what is it saying? I want to get through this right properly. Kate, are you with me? Mm -hmm. Wake up, son. You'll be fine. Okay, all the first lean males that come out of your herd and your flocks. Okay, so we're sanctifying the first males. And then it says you shall eat it year by year. So this is, okay, so we're not going to be able to do this. We're not, because we don't have a place that Yah has called his own, right? He only calls his temples his own. That's where he puts his name on it. Um, which Yahuwah shall ch choose. We can't do this. And if there be any blemish therein, as it be lame or blind or have any ill blemish, you shall not sacrifice it unto Yahuwah Eloheka. You shall eat it within your gates. The unclean and the clean person shall eat it alike, as the roebuck and as the deer. Only you shall not eat the blood thereof. You shall pour it upon the ground as water. Okay. Separate, separate commands here, right? So one is, um, this is one of these stumbling blocks that Christians would have, right? That, oh, the clean and the unclean person shall eat it alike. Uh, they would they would somehow figure out that was unclean foods or something. But this is not talking about unclean foods. This is talking about if a person is clean or unclean. I'm glad they specified it here, though. They yeah, did, they did. They did not do it in the last few yeah. times, which is a little strange, but now it, it makes more sense. It does make more sense. But, I mean, that's the thing is back in the days, nobody would ever eat a pig, right? That would just not be food. <laughs> They're like, hey, have some food. And they're like, that's not food. That's, that's a pig. Okay, so um, we have it. Don't drink the blood, right? Do not eat the blood thereof. Mm -hmm. You got that one, Nicole? Or yeah, you will? I will. Okay. Okay. So that's it. That is the end of this. The only question I have is right here um, about the first lean males of the herd. Do we sanctify them? We can't really do this, can sanctifying we? Sanctifying them, I think, was bringing them to Yahoo and sacrificing them, making them be like the sacrifice of Yah, or you pay the ransom for it, and if not, 
if they were blemished, they weren't perfect, you would eat them yourself, where Yahuwah told you to, just like if you were too poor to sacrifice, you would go and you would eat, or you uh, couldn't get to it, you would basically change all the silver and eat where he said to eat. Right. Okay, well, I think that does it for us today. I think that is going to, we have, we have a, unfortunately, we have a busy day, and uh, hopefully Yah does not curse us because we have to go try to get our cow standing and things of that nature, and so may Yah bless this endeavor, and may he bless all of you guys out there. Um, anything in the comments, Nicole? Um, I don't think so. There's not much going on there. All right. So those of you out there, we love you guys very, very much. Thank you guys so much for, for celebrating Shabbat with us and with Yah, especially with Yah, and for being our family. We love you guys very, very much, and we can't thank you guys enough. And um, I guess that will do it. Anyone else have anything else? Anyone in the comments have anything? If there's nothing there, then I think we're going to sign off, and we are going to, unfortunately, get to work. All right. Shalom. Okay, shalom, everybody. Much love to y'all, and we will catch you guys tomorrow. Shalom.